Okay, good afternoon once again. So we are starting chapter 15, the immune system part one. Uh, and in part one, we're gonna cover defense mechanism, innate and adaptive immunity. Innate is you are born with and adaptive you develop later. And in these two today, we're gonna focus on innate or non-specific immunity. We call it non-specific because it is against all kinds of microorganisms, whether it is virus, bacteria, protozoa, parasites, or any other, cancers. In this uh, non-specific immunity topic, we will cover activation of innate immunity, how we activate, how the white blood cells and other phagocytes helps in phagocytosis of microorganism, how fever we develop and how it is defense mechanism for our body. Then interferons are the protein produced by cells infected with virus. And what is the role of interferons in protecting your body from viral infection? And then we will touch some parts of the adaptive specific immunity and today we will cover the, the component of adaptive and spe specific immunity, which induce immunity. They are antigens, haptens. And to measure the immunity in your body, we do immunoassays, like you measure the antibodies in your body, and that is called immunoassays. And there is local inflammation, which is the response to infection and trauma that is the breeze between non-specific and specific immunity, okay? So before we start, innate is non-specific and adaptive is specific, okay? So immune system works with the lymphatic system. And that's why we always study lymphatic and immune system together. So here you see in this diagram, this side, the red one is the cardiovascular system, arterial system, and the left side is the venous system. So let's see simple, simplified structure of the heart. Heart pumps blood through the arterial system, through the arterial system, the, when heart pumps blood, from the left ventricle through the aorta, it goes all over the body. And ultimately, artery becomes capillaries where it exchanges the gases, the nutrients, the ions, and the fluid. And then those ions, electrolytes, everything, gases, goes outside the capillaries, some come inside, and some fluid and protein molecules and other stuff remain in the tissue. They do not return in the capillaries. Those are carried by lymphatic system and then take it to the heart through the veins in the neck. So when they carry this tissue fluid from here, they carry them through this lymphatic vessels and to the lymph nodes on the way. So let's see, if my lymph from my finger is coming, then it will come to my axillary lymph nodes and my lymph nodes in the axillary lymph node will filter that lymph. And if there is any abnormal cells, dead cells or microorganism or microorganism infected cells, then in the lymph node, we have a lot of white blood cells and other macrophages, phagocytes, they fight and they kill the microorganism and induce immunity. That's how immune and lymphatic system works together, okay? So, summary of the immune system. This is just the summary, so you don't go detail here. I'm gonna talk about this in detail. So immune system are two kinds, <clears throat> acquired and innate. So which one we are born with? Acquired or innate? Innate. innate? innate. We are born with 
innate. Innate means natural, without name. We call innate means having no names. They are from the birth. So what are what do you get from the birth? Or before, before, before birth? There are two types. Either they are physical barrier or they are coming from your blood, blood born. So physical barrier like skin, mucous membranes, saliva, flushing action of urine and tears, stomach acid, these all structures and the chemical compound stop infection before it enters the body. For example, tough skin layer does not get bacteria inside. Skin contains a lot of chemical compound and the immunoglobulins which fight bacteria. Mucous membrane trap bacteria through the cilia. They hold in the mucus. Saliva kills bacteria because saliva contains enzyme, thylene enzyme. Flushing action of urine and tears. If there is any microorganism in your eye, tear flush it. Urine passing flush bacteria from the urethra and from the vaginal opening. So you have bacteria not going up and causing infection. Stomach acid, when you eat food, you eat billions of microorganisms together. What our stomach acid do? The pH of our stomach is like two. It kills all the microorganisms. And that's how it stops infection before it enters inside the body, like in the blood, in the tissue, in the visceral organ, okay? Let's see by breaching these physical barrier. If they enter the blood, then we call blood burn, born. But even in blood, we have several innate system which fight infection and they are phagocytes, which are white blood cells you see here. Phago means eater, cytes means cells. So they are eater of other cells, other microorganism. So these phagocytes are neutrophils, macrophages means a large eater, vasophil, eosinophil, and natural killer cells. Similarly, in our blood, we have complement protein produced by our liver and complement system makes a cascade, like complement, there are several kinds of protein and they change in response to infection. And those cascade then activate the alternative pathway, which ultimately activate these phagocytes, which ultimately cause death of dangerous organism or direct killing of bacteria. For example, there are several complement. Those complement cascade make a hole in the microorganism cell wall, bacterial cell wall, and help busting of the microorganism. We'll see that later, okay? So this is innate immunity. You are born with these things. Now, after you exposure to microorganism, after exposure to microorganism, then you develop acquired or specific immunity. And these acquired are specific to particular microorganism. Innate is for everything. So let's see if you have exposed to COVID virus, then you will develop immunity against COVID virus. That means you have immunity specifically against COVID virus. Are you following me? You are not immune to flu virus because you are specific to COVID. So what, how you develop this? Once you expose to the microorganism, then your B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes get activated. When B cells get active, they produce humoral immunity, means immunity in plasma. After antigen exposure, these B cells activate their baby cells, lymphoblast cells, and they form plasma cells and clonal B cells. Clonal B cells keeps the memory of that particular antigen. Let's see if you have a COVID virus, then COVID RNA antigen, they keep memory. 
at the same time, some lymphoblast becomes plasma cell. Lymphoblast becomes lymphocytes and then lymphocytes becomes plasma cells. Plasma cells produce a lot of immunoglobulins. Which immunoglobulin? Gamma immunoglobulins. Those globulins then bind with the virus cell membrane and then activate the complement system. Then complement system cascade activate these phagocytes and phagocytes kills the microorganism. At the same time, other white blood cell is lymphocyte, which is T lymphocyte, produce T cell mediated immunity. So T cells, whole T cell becomes released into the T cell activated from your bone marrow. They get activated and turn into three kinds of T cells, suppressor T cell, helper T cell, and cytotoxic T cells. What does these T cells do? They directly kill the abnormal body cells, which is infected with the virus or cancer cells or any abnormal bacterial cells, uh, uh, the human body cell, which is infected of intracellular bacteria. They kill them directly. That's why we call them cell mediated immunity. From the B, antibodies comes and antibodies release into a plasma. That's why we call them humoral immunity. T cell directly involved in killing microorganism and microorganism infected cell. That's why we call them cell mediated immunity or T cell directly, cell directly is active. B cell produce antibodies and antibodies is active. That's why we call them humoral and cell mediated immunity. Okay, so this is summary of the immune system, okay? Innate is you are born with, acquired, you develop only when you expose to it. Okay, so now defense mechanism of our body. The immune system is the structure and processes against the pathogen. Any structure of our body and other processes inside the body are defense mechanism. And they are grouped into two categories, innate, non-specific, is inherited as part of a structure of each organism and comprise all the white blood cell except lymphocyte. So innate Im immunity is all the body structure which protect you from microorganism as well as white blood cell inside your blood, except which white blood cell? Lymphocytes. Lymphocyte, T and B lymphocytes, okay? And then adaptive specific immunity is purely, specifically the function of lymphocyte, T and B lymphocytes. And you will get that only after with exposure to the microorganism or the parts of microorganism, which is called antigens. Let's see if we have a bacteria. Bacteria has a cell wall. Bacteria has a nucleus. Bacteria has other structure. Bacteria has the cilia, flagella. So those flagellar protein, cell wall protein, those proteins are antigen, which are the part of bacteria, okay? So here, innate versus adaptive immunity. You see innate immunity, you have epithelial barrier, you have phagocytic cells, some of the white blood cells and some of the permanent resident white blood cells which are found in the tissue. Uh, in the physiology, we have done the nervous system, yes? Have we done nervous system yet? Yes or no? I think so, yes, yeah. You have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think so, yeah. <laughs> I forget and you guys forget too. So we are done with the uh, nervous system. There were several supporting cells in the nervous system. And one of the supporting cells were phagocytic cells in the nervous system. What was that phagocytic cells? Microglial. Microglial cells. And that microglial cells are also non-specific immune cells. One example, similar cells are in the lungs like alveolar macrophage, in your skin, that is Langerhans cells, in liver, steelhead cells. There are a lot, they all are. So similar cells are like dendritic cells are in the skin. The natural killer cell and complement. These are the part of innate immunity, okay? Once this dendritic cells or phagocytic cells and other body cells get this antigen, 
then antigen is presented to the, you see, this cell, antigen presenting cells, take the antigen and then present to the T and B cells. So they get present to the T cell and B cell get from the plasma. Once they get antigen, what happens? Let me clear here. Antigen presenting cells present antigen to the T cell. B cell gets from the plasma because immuno antigens are floating in the plasma of your blood. So they get from there. But T cell do not recognize antigen floating in the plasma. It must presented by the APC. APC is antigen presenting cells, which I have written here, I think antigen presenting cells. APC, antigen presenting cell, for example, macrophage, complement system has four major function, including lysis of infection organism, activation of inflammation, opsonization and immune system. So here, the, was once antigen presented to the T lymphocyte, then T lymphocyte becomes effector T cell, which are cytotoxic T cell, helper T cells, and regulatory T cells, you can talk about that. This produce antibodies and these effector cells attack the infected microorganism or microorganisms directly. So T lymphocytes are like royals, monarch. You have to present to them, then they recognize, otherwise not. Okay, so let's go now detail in innate, non -innate, uh, innate or non-specific immunity. So in innate immunity distinguishes between self and non-self by recognizing molecules called PAMPs, pathogen associated molecular pattern. So however, the innate macrophage cells like macrophage, neutrophils and other cells recognize in our body, whether it is foreign particle or our own particles. They recognize the molecular pattern present on the plasma membrane or nuclear material of the microorganism. So they recognize that antigen, which is called PAMPs, pathogen associated molecular pattern. Once they recognize, they say this is foreign, this is self. So let's see albumin in our body. We have albumin protein in our plasma, uh, in our plasma, yes? When our wandering macrophage see that albumin, immediately they recognize, oh, this is mine. This is own brother, don't do anything. If let's see the, uh, the, 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 the pollens from outside get into your blood, which you have never seen before, then your microphase say, no, this is foreign. And then they capture it, take inside the cell, process it. And if it is foreign, kill them, process it, and then present the antigen to the T cells or put into the plasma so B cell will recognize. Are you following me? Yes. Okay. Yes. So in innate immunity, this is the first line of defense against invading microorganism. Pathogen, pathogen means disease causing agent, pathogens. The other part of innate is epithelial barrier, high acidity of gastric juice, phagocytosis, interferon, fever, and other function of white blood cell except the lymphocytes, which we explained earlier, okay? So activation of innate immunity Activation of uh, innate immunity is triggered by antigen on the microorganism. What is the another name for that antigen? PAMP. PAMP, very good, it's PAMP, pathogen associated molecular pattern. And these PAMPs are produced by microorganism. Some of the example of micro, uh, the, the PAMPs are lipopolysaccharides. You know, in our plasma membrane, there is protein, carbohydrate, and other stuff. So lipopolysaccharides 
are the lipid and glucose chain found on the plasma membrane of uh, gram negative bacteria. Similarly, on the, uh, on the gram positive microorganism, we have peptidoglycans. These two are from the gram positive and gram negative bacteria, which are the PAMs or antigen. Other antigens are flagella, which is the extension of the like cilia, foreign DNA, foreign RNA, like COVID uh, virus has RNA. And that RNA is antigen for our white blood cells. And that's why we make all the vaccine have been made from that messenger RNA, molecules of the COVID vaccine, okay? Some of our immune cells, so what are the PAMPs, PAMPs examples, LPS, peptidoglycans, flagella, foreign DNA, foreign RNA, these are the example of PAMPs or <laughs> antigens. Uh, some of our immune cells have receptor for PAMPs, which displays on their surface. So how our immune cells like white blood cell or macrophage recognize them? We have a receptor and this is PAMPs, they bind and that's how they recognize. And the receptors on our immune cells are called tall receptor. So tall receptors are like receptors on the membrane of the immune cells, okay? There are 10 different kinds of those receptor identified in human immune cells, okay? Okay, so those immune cells now, how those immune cells, what does it do? Once they recognize foreign particle, they phagocyte, they eat them. So phagocytosis is performed by three classes of phagocytic cells. They are neutrophil, mononuclear phagocytes. They are macrophage and monocytes. Monocytes are one of the white blood cells, you know. So horseshoe-shaped nuclei, large cell. And macrophages are same monocytes when they are found in the tissue. Then we call them macrophages, like macroglial cells in the brain. Some of them are organ specific macrophages. They are found in liver, limb, nodes, lungs, and brain. And they are called fixed phagocytes. They are found in the, the veins, lining the vein wall of the liver, in the spleen, lymph nodes, which remove the pathogens. So these cells are the immune cells which eat the microorganism, which is called phagocytosis, okay? So let's see how the process of phagocytosis. Here, you have your screen. What happened? Okay. So, Once you have infection, you have bacteria here, rod shape bacteria. With the infection of the tissue here and you have blood vessel here. Then the white blood cells in this area produce some chemical compound called chemokines. And that chemokines then attract the white blood cell from the blood vessel. So white blood cell is coming, neutrophil is coming here. When they escape from the blood vessel, that extra vessation or escaping of white blood cell from the blood vessel is called diapedesis. So they are coming here, they develop their pseudopod and take the bacteria inside, okay? Once take the bacteria, once they take bacteria, inside the cell. So you see here, 
this is the white blood cell. And then bacteria is taken by endocytosis inside or phagocytosis. Once bacteria is inside, bacteria is fused with the lysosomal enzymes, digest them, and then their product is thrown outside in the plasma or they present the part of this bacteria on the plasma membrane surface and present to the T cells. Are you following me? Yes. Yes. Shut yes. up. Okay, I have to mute everyone, I think. Okay, so that is how phagocytosis kills the microorganism in blood. So up to now, inside the blood, still we are in the non-specific. Once you have infection, what happens? Your white blood cell, infected cells produce a lot of pyrogen, endogenous toxins. And that toxin then induce fever, okay? So fever is another part of innate immune system. Fever is the component of innate immunity. And this occurs when hypothalamic thermostat is reset upwards by interleukin 1b and other cytokines. And these interleukin 1b cytokines are produced by our infected or activated white blood cells and liver. These are called endogenous pyrogens. They are produced in response to infection, okay? And these interleukin and cytokines set up your hypothalamus up. Like our hypothalamus is the thermostat in our body, which is set up at certain temperature. If you set up up, then what happens? Body temperature will increase. Why our body does that? Any guess? It's harder for the foreign microbes to live in the heat. Very good. The normal growth and multiplication temperature of the microorganism is our body temperature, which is 37 degree Fahrenheit. But if it goes up, our body try to increase the body temperature so that back, uh, uh, the bacteria and virus growth will slow down. But sometimes what happens? Temperature goes up and up and up. And let's see if it is 46, 45 degree for, uh, centigrade or 105 degree Fahrenheit, then what happens? You will not kill bacteria or virus. You will kill your own with uh, the brain cells too. That's why that becomes dangerous. At the same level, lower level, it is good. But if it is beyond our tolerance, this is bad because this, it can kill our own cells. That's why we need tin and all, okay? So this is, Fever is the high body temperature in response to infection. And that is protective mechanism for our body so that virus bacteria will suppress. That's why in most of the virus infection, what happens in like common cold, virus goes a lot and then fever goes high and then virus subsides with their cycles. Okay. Interferon is another part of the another part of the innate immunity. So inter interferon is all about protection against virus. And interferon is produced by the cells which are infected by virus. Very important. Interferons are protein or polypeptide produced by cells infected with virus. That product provides short acting non-specific resistance to viral infection in nearby cells. So let's see if we have here, 
one cell here and let's see there is like blue virus coronavirus so coronavirus then come here and then it enters your cell okay but i have another cells here a lot of other cells too other normal cells other normal cells here okay so what does virus do let's see coronavirus when it enters when you inhale from other inhalation it get into your lungs from the lungs they go to your alveoli and they enter into your alveoli cells once they enter into alveoli cells, what they do? They start taking over the DNA and reproducing themselves. Yeah, so these viruses are like pirates. When the pirates control other sheep, what they do? They take over the cargo, everything, start running the ship, so does virus. Virus takes control of our DNA and RNA, and then start making their own DNA and RNA, and stop making our normal DNA and RNA, and multiply, fill the cell with their own cell, rupture these cells, then come to other cells. Okay? So once these cells, our normal body cells, red cell, get infected with this blue virus, immediately our cells rough endoplasmic reticulum start making a protein that is called interferon. And they secrete outside and those interferons, let's see interferon is the this color. They start covering the normal cells here nearby. They cover them. They cover the normal cell and they protect these cells from the virus infection from the same virus infection okay that is called interferon there are three types of interferon alpha beta gamma and alpha interferon beta interferon and gamma interferon okay so that is the So, how are you in there? Okay, so the, some function of the interferons are here. Uh, effects of interferons. screen, Professor. You cannot? No. It's stop sharing. So, so how these interferons protect your healthy cells from the virus infection? There is certain stimulation factor and certain inhibition factor of the component of the interferons. So they stimulate macrophage phagocytosis. So macrophage will be active and phagocyte the virus infected cells. Activity of cytotoxic or killer T cells. And that's how they kill the infected cells and activates the, uh, the specific immunity. Activation of natural killer cells. In the body, we have some special white blood cell, we call them natural killer cells. 
they activate them. Production of antibodies from the B lymphocytes and plasma cells, they activate them. At the same time, they inhibit the cell division. That's why virus infection reduce the amount of cells in your body and reduce the body weight. They inhibit tumor growth, interferon, so you protect from the tumor. They inhibit maturation of fat cells, and they also inhibit maturation of erythrocytes, and that's why anemia is associated with virus infection. Okay. Now, adaptive or specific immunity. Adaptive immunity is immunity you develop only when you are exposed to antigens. And exposure to antigens can be with the infection of the microorganism. Infection can be clinical and subclinical. Infection can be can be clinical and subclinical. Okay, so clinical infection is like, let's say you have exposure to coronavirus and then you have all the symptoms of coronavirus and you got sick and then you recovered, okay? So that infection is clinical COVID infection. But there are people now, one in five people in US has antibodies against COVID. That doesn't mean all those one out of five people have infection and they have symptoms. Some people got infection and they felt like malaise, fever, a little bit chilly, and then recovered completely, but still they develop antibodies. It matters what is the concentration. That's a different thing, but develop antibodies. That is subclinical infection. So infection without symptom is subclinical infection and infection with symptoms are clinical infection. Either way, you are exposed to microorganism, that is infection. Adaptive immunity you can get from your mom during the childbirth or during the, uh, the, the fetal life. So when you are in, sitting inside your mother's womb and your mother has some adaptive immunity, you will get that from your mother. Like if your mother has antibodies against tetanus, you are immune to tetanus inside the womb. After your birth, you, it will not stay for longer, but at least two, three months, you will have protection. That is another way. Uh, adaptive immunity, you can get through the vaccine. So now we are taking COVID vaccine. What is COVID vaccine? COVID vaccine is that RNA from the COVID virus, and we make that RNA virus weaker, less the virulence, and other vaccines are like whole microorganism. They are live microorganism. They keep them uh, with the other chemical compound, weaken them, and make suspension, and they give you in, uh, in, uh, the, the vaccine shot. So you can get from the vaccine exposure, and it's all way you can develop adaptive immunity. Are you following me? So adaptive immunity is acquired ability to defend against specific pathogens by prior exposure to those specific pathogens. So adaptive immunity is like heaven. I hope nobody goes to hell, heaven. You will not go to heaven if you don't die. It is exactly the same way, adaptive immunity, okay? So you have to, ex to be exposed to the antigen to get adaptive immunity. It is mediated by production of specific antibodies by lymphocytes, both T and B lymphocytes, okay? So what is the important thing in adaptive immunity then? What your body needs to expose to? Antigen. So let's talk about antigen. What is antigens? Antigens are molecules that 
elicit or produce production of antibodies that specifically bind those antigens. So these antigens are the activator of the immune cells to produce antibodies. And they are usually large molecules and they are always foreign. If your immune cells start making antibodies against your own self molecules, then what happens? What we call that condition? Autoimmune. Autoimmune disease, good. Then we call it autoimmune. That's why your body should recognize only foreign antigens. Normally they make antibodies only against non-self antigens and antigens are large complex molecules and can have a number of antigenic determined sites. So let's see if there is an antigen from pollens. The pollens will have several antigen, uh, the, the spikes and each site can bind with different kind of antibodies, okay? or can bind with different, the immune cells and produce antibodies, okay? Haptans is another terminology we, we use uh, in this case. So haptans are small non-antigenic molecules that become antigens when bound to proteins, form an antigenic determined site and useful for creating antibodies for research and diagnosis. So haptans are some natural non-antigen molecules, they are not like antigenic. If you put that molecule immediately in the body, it will not do anything. But if you attach it to another protein and then put it, then it becomes antigens. That's why it's called haptans. So haptans are like half antigen, okay? Immune assays, immunoassays. Assays means measurement, immune means immune. So how much antibodies, immunoglobulins you have in your plasma can be measured. How we measure that? I take your blood, centrifuge it. Let me ask you, we have done that before. So if I take your blood and centrifuge it, the top part, liquid part is called? Plasma. 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 Bottom part is called formed elements. Formed elements. So if I take plasma only, I decant separate plasma and put in another vial. And then I take all clotting factors like fibrinogen, clotting factor eight, one to 12, separate from the plasma. I live with water, protein molecules. And protein molecules are albumin, globulin, and fibrinogen. And one of the globulin is gamma globulin, which is antibodies. So what is that fluid left without clotting factor called? Serum. Serum. And that is the serum which we use to detect the immunoglobulin. And that method of detection is called immunoassage. Are you following me? So let's see how we do it. Here is the <coughs> antibodies. This one, the YCF green protein. These are the antibodies. Anti X antigen antibodies. So let's see, we can buy this. Let's see, this is X can be anything like antibodies against, let's see, COVID. COVID is famous now, so I'm giving example for everything for COVID. In the past, I used to give other stuff, okay? So this is COVID antigen and I can buy antibodies because lab has already developed antibodies. So I take antibodies in a vial and I buy it and I take your serum and mix these antibodies with your serum. I have attached antibodies to the latex particle so make it larger, otherwise antibodies are very small. Now what happens when I put these antibodies with the latex, sorry, if I put this latex and then antibodies, and if I put 
somebody's blood with antigen, what happens? They will agglutinate. And that agglutination will clump. And that is clumping called agglutination. And we put under microscope in the fluorescent light. If you see clumping, then these things are tagged with fluorescent light and it light up and you can see positive reaction. And that's how doctor says you have the immunoglobulins and then we tighter how much you have based on measurement, okay? And that's how you can detect the immunoglobulins. And a lot of people who has high concentration of antibodies, immunoglobulins against COVID can donate their blood. And then again, we do the same thing, centrifuge, take out plasma, take out clotting factor, take out pretty much other stuff and then give that immunoglobulins to the patient who is already suffering from the, uh, the COVID. Our president got that. Our president got that uh, previous president, not the President Trump. He got that immunoglobulin, he got anti-malarial drug, he got pretty much everything. And that's why he, he's like older guy, but got care faster. Okay, so that is the immunoglobulins, uh, uh, the, the, what is called amino assay. Now local inflammation. Local inflammation occurs when bacteria enter a break in the skin and then inflammatory reaction is uh, first activated by non-specific mechanism of phagocytosis and complement activation. Complement protein, attract phagocytes to the area of infection. And then a specific and non-specific immune mechanism cooperate in the development of local inf infection, inflammation. So let me go and see the process here. So once you have infection here, you can see bacteria is entering. And then bacteria is covered by bacterial cell wall contains PAMPs and those PAMPs are binding with the antibodies. Once bind with the antibodies, then here happens two things. One, your phagocytic cells like neutrophil recognize them easily and start phagocytosing and fuse with the plasma, the, the lysosomes and digest them. And at the same time, this also activate, these white blood cells activates the complement system, the protein system in our blood. And those activation of complement activates our mast cell. Mast cell then release a chemical compound called histamine. Histamine released in the tissue, then come here in the blood vessel and then increase the flow of blood vessel, dilates the blood vessels so that phag more phagocytic cells, more blood flow in this area, more phagocytic cells escape from the blood vessel by the process of diapedesis, come here and fight in infection. And then more white blood cells, B lymphocytes comes here and then they produce antibodies. At the same time, these phagocytic cells present antigens to the T lymphocytes. And that's how the non-specific and specific immunity work together here. So up to here, phagocytosing, releasing, and activating everything, these are non-specific. But once antibodies produce and antigen presented to the T lymphocyte and T lymphocyte activated, that is the specific immunity, okay? So once you have infection, let's say you have infection in your finger, abscess, what happens? First cell to come is neutrophils. We see within six hours, all the neutrophils rust there because there is increased diameter of the blood vessel due to dilation by histamine. And then by the 12 hours, most of the neutrophil has either fought dead or moved from there. And then slowly monocytes, large phagocytes come. They stay there for a long time. And then lymphocytes come later on 36 hours and they work slowly, okay? This is all today, guys, uh, the first part of immune system. 
we'll go over other stuff next time. Any question? Um, I have a question. Uh, when you were talking about the antibodies that like the former president got, um, could, are those like the um, like the artificial immunity or passive immunity? Like when you get the antibodies? That is artificial passive. You are making from getting from others. So that's artificial passive. Okay, okay. Yeah, but that is a specific. I think somebody typed a question for you, Dr. Shah. Sorry? Somebody has a question for you in chat. Not about this, but we are going to lab today or Thursday. We don't have today lab, I think. I think the next lab we have uh, is next, next week. week. Yeah, the lab is next week. Yeah, next week's the next lab. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Shah. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good Have day. A good day. Uh -huh. Professor. And there is the office hours today at five o'clock. Every day, yes. Okay. Professor Shaw. Uh-huh. Uh, are you gonna give us the discussion question answer after the due dates then? The one about the red blood cell count and the humanity. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I am gonna write there too, but let me let me uh this how can I Stop the recording here.